Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you worshiping with us this morning. It's the 12th day of Christmas. It's the second Sunday in the church calendar, second Sunday of Christmas. And, but we're celebrating Epiphany, which is January 6th, tomorrow. Uh, we're celebrating that today as we, uh, Christ is revealed to the world as the light of the world, Epiphany to show up. Uh, the star showed up, the wise men showed up, and actually the wise men were like, uh, were a caravan, most likely from Persia. So there were women in that also. So when we talk about the wise men, uh, the gifts that they brought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, um, many people have said if it was wise women, they would have brought diapers and a hot dish. And um, if you ask the young kids, they would have brought a cell phone and um, different things like that. But as we realize the gifts we bring to the light of the world, Christ's light shining in our lives. So with that in mind, we worship today. The announcements are in detail in your bulletin. I would like to point out, uh, well, first, a thank you to Lynn Hansen for sharing her gifts of music today uh, with us. The annual congregational meeting is January 19th, following the 9 o'clock worship service, and annual reports will be available on January 10th. The high school youth, 9th through 12th graders, we have ultimate game night this coming Saturday. So it promises to be wonderful. It'll include sardines. Now I'm not fond of sardines, but I love the game sardines. So um, please invite friends and neighbors, cousins and uh, everybody. <laughs> uh, Senior Saints is Wednesday, January 15th. So mark your calendar for that. We meet at 10 o'clock at Broadway Apartments. Uh, and Dinner Game Connect Group uh, everybody's invited to a potluck on Sunday, January 12th at 6 p.m. So next Sunday, uh, you'll see. Notice the down. You'll notice the other announcements. But I would also like to point out that program week begins. Regular programming begins this week, and so Wednesday night supper at five o'clock is spaghetti, and then confirmation and Wednesday school all the other activities. Today after worship, um, please join us downstairs for Coffee Fellowship. It is hosted by McKenna Erickson and her family as they um, plan for the youth trips, uh, mission trip this summer, and then next year, um, the youth gap up in Minneapolis. So please give your support and join us for fellowship after the service. I also want to thank you for the time off to be with my father down in Florida. Uh, that was a good place to be, <laughs> but uh, the opportunity to be with my father um, since this is the first Christmas and my, it would have been my mom's birthday, uh, to be with my dad was very important and I, I'm 
eternally grateful to you in your support of that. I also, uh, I'm a little embarrassed, I slipped, I didn't fall, and it wasn't on ice or snow or on carpet, but I slipped on a dryer sheet. <laughs> I know, it'll go in the chapter of only you, Meg. Uh, but if I sit down or my back's giving me some trouble, so uh, please bear with me. <laughs> Nothing unusual. <laughs> so at this time, after my confession, I invite you to please stand as you are able for confession and forgiveness. No, that's not right. <laughs> But please stay standing and let us sing together our gathering song, Angels We Have Heard on High. It's in the Red Book 289. Our service continues with the confession and forgiveness as printed on our service bulletin. We gather to worship this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pause to confess our sins before God and one another. God of the starlight, Shine your love into the darkness of our lives. So often we are preoccupied with ourselves and we forget the needs of others. We accept violence as a way of life and we fail to respond to the cries of help that come from far and near. May your love, O oh God, fall upon us and wash away our indifference. Fill us with care and compassion. God is gracious and forgiving and never gives up on us. Jesus, who himself stood at the very edge of impossibility in the cross and the empty tomb, says to us, you are loved and you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And let us pray together the prayer of the day as printed in our bulletin. Holy God, you led the wise men to your son by the leading of a star. 
Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have kids that are willing to come up? <laughs> All right. Yes. Wonderful. Do you want to come see me? No. <laughs> no. Do you want to come see the other kids? <laughs> no. I've got gifts. <laughs> Good to see you. Did you have a nice Christmas? And are you excited to go back to school or preschool or is that exciting? Yeah. Have you been playing with your toys? Or are they in a closet? You're playing with them. That's great. Because sometimes this far away from Christmas, sometimes they end up being put in the closet or on the floor. But I'm glad you're using your gifts. You know, epiphany is a word, kind of a funny word, isn't it? And it's the light of Christ that Jesus is shown to us. And it's getting darker, isn't it? I mean, remember we used to be able to, used to, be able to stay up a little bit later and it was light? But now it gets dark pretty early, doesn't it? And so... What do we mean when it's dark? What do we need to be able to see? How can we see in the darkness? With a light. What kind of light do we need? A flashlight? What else might we use? Sometimes when you go into a dark room, what do you do? Do you switch on a light to help you see? Sometimes, do you know where things are so you can see in the dark? Yeah. But if somebody moves something, what happens? Do you trip and fall or maybe bump your legs? Yeah. Yeah, we can, you can fall down if you can't, don't know where you're going, right? And so we look at Jesus as the light of the world. Can you see that? That Jesus lights up our world for us? And with Jesus in our life, he helps us to see. See through the darkness and gives us hope. So I have candles for you. What would you use a candle for? Okay, yep. For a birthday cake. And we just celebrated Jesus' birthday, right? Because he was born on Christmas. So I want you to have a candle because it'll help you to remember Jesus is the light in our life. To remember Jesus was born for us to come into our lives. So you want to take a candle? And maybe your mom or dad can help you light it. But just to have the candle, it can help you remember that Jesus is the light in our life. And guess what else? Jesus wants us to be the light in somebody else's life. So do you know when somebody's sad? How do you know if somebody's sad? Doesn't it show on their face sometimes? But sometimes you don't even know somebody's sad. But we can pray for other people that God would be in their life, right? So that the light of Jesus can shine in their hearts and Jesus can shine in our hearts too, right? So let us remember that that Jesus gives us the light to shine in our hearts 
so that we can be a light in other people's lives. Can you remember that? Great. Let's pray together and the congregation will help us. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us, thank you for us and sending Jesus as the light of the world. Help us to shine the light for others. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Do you know somebody that might need the light of Christ? You can take another candle and share it. And we have our Sunday school teacher. You can go to Sunday school and we have special music. Yeah, you can go that way. The psalm this morning is Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 14. We'll read responsively. I'll begin. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the king of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From a 
oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Here ends the psalm reading. questions to keep in mind. Are you still seeking Jesus like the wise men? Or have you put the de decorations and lights away until next Christmas? And if the answer is yes, you are still seeking Jesus in your life, what gifts are you bringing to the newborn king? What gifts are you using to be a light to the world? A reading from the book of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd the people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had, they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure, tre treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Da, da, da. If this was a blockbuster movie, we kind of know what would happen, or think we know. We've seen it before. Somebody powerful acting out of fear. Somebody who has been ruler, his power and riches being questioned, causing insecurity and fear, and the people of the kingdom also in fear of what might happen. The wise men see a star and hear that the king of the Jews, the child born king, is being born. So they follow the star. Now, where would you go to find a child born king? Would you go to a barn? This is not rhetorical, you can answer. Where would you go? To a palace, of course. You go to the palace. Now, did they know that King Herod was 
a tyrant? And no, probably not. They wanted to find this newborn king. So you go to the palace. And the king greets you and wants to know more about this child that's going to save the world. What? Somebody being born to question my authority? King Herod had everything going his way. But he was insecure. And so, can't you just see it in the story? If it was a Netflix movie or a series, we'd be shouting at the TV, No! Don't go to him. Don't listen to him. But we also see that in a dream, the angel of the Lord came to him, to them, and said, don't go back. But the king wanted to pay homage. The ruler of that territory wanted to worship the king. Do you believe that? No. And we know the story. But then I bring up that question. Have you put away? Have you gotten rid of the Christmas tree? Have you put away the decorations and the lights? Um, the presents? The gifts? How about in, in your life? And in mine? It's so easy for us to forget why Christ was born. He was born to die. Born to die as Savior, as hope for us, as a light in our darkness. There is nothing, nothing that can destroy the light of Christ in our lives. But we forget. <laughs> and we get busy. I get it. I get busy. I journal. Not. I mean, in theory, I journal. I looked at my journal. Well, I couldn't find the one journal that I most recently wrote in. That tells you something. But I thought, you know, I'm going to start putting down again the prayer needs. And even when I'm tired, I can just lift up my journal and say, God, you know the needs here. I pray for these people. I mean, that's the least I could do. Well, the journal I did find was from four years ago. I mean, I have journaled since, but I thought, so is the light of Christ in you? Yeah, sometimes. When I most need the light of Christ. But don't I most need the light of Christ every day? We look at our world in turmoil. The wise men went to pay homage, which is literally to bow down. They went to worship in wonder. Where is the wonder, people? Have we lost that awe in God's presence in our life? Have we become complacent and indifferent? I do have fear Maybe not fear, but some trepidation. Um, and maybe it's concern about what's happening in Iran. Because we don't know the outcome. But we can trust in the light of Christ, God's presence with us, to give us hope, to pray for peace, to let the light of Christ shine in us and through us. So, praying, that's something we can all do, right? It doesn't cost us anything. But to really pray. And what are we praying for? To pray for peace. To pray for care for one another. To pray for those in need. And we may not know 
maybe we see people that don't have a sad face because they're holding things inside. On vacation, I thought, you know, I go to the pool and I meet a lot of people and so I said, um, God, place in front of me the needs that you want me to be present for other people. Well, this one guy that was bugging me all the time, um, counting my laps in the pool, and he was off. I know he was off, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But um, <clears throat> he did point out <laughs> the fact that of my size he did call me chubby so that's a good thing that <laughs> and he's he was surprised that I could stay up and that I could swim laps that I didn't drown well I guess that's a good thing too but then I thought of my prayer oh God I see you want me to be present with this man that's annoying and drives me nuts. You see, we don't get to pick and choose who we count as friends. We don't get to pick and choose who we're going to pray for. We don't get to pick and choose who are strangers and who need the light of Christ. Because we all do. We all need the light of Christ. To live in hope and to live in the light of Christ is who God created us to be. And we know what God asks of us. To clothe the naked, to bring water to the thirsty, to feed the hungry, to visit the imprisoned, to give hospitality to the stranger. I know we've all learned stranger danger, stranger danger. But we can pray for them, can't we? And we can be that light in the darkness. To be able to find joy. And then, as we continue to seek Christ, as we continue to seek the light of Christ, to be filled with wonder and awe, at all God can do and has done for us. To be filled with wonder and worship. Every day to wake up with wonder and worship. To praise God that we're alive. To not be filled with terror and tension. Because we know fear leads to insecurities leads to hate and leads to judgment and many negative things. We need to learn to listen, to listen to the Lord speaking to us of how we can be light in other people's lives. So that does bring me to that second question. What are the gifts that you're bringing to the Christ child. What are the gifts you have that you can share with the world? I was so grateful to be with my dad because this was the first Christmas without our mom and it was her birthday. And every day for 23 days, I think it was, we talked about mom. Sometimes he had tears in his eyes and he said it was just kind of sleep. <laughs> but it always ended with a good thought, a good memory, and joy. And my dad had gone three times a day feeding my mom. That was his purpose in life. And listening to people, it was so good for me to hear every single person I ran into. We love your dad. Some of the women said, I hope you don't mind that we kissed your dad. All right. And a couple women wanted to set him up. He's going to be 94, so. 
And I said something to dad and he goes, I don't know about that. <laughs> I said, Dad, just listening to the people, your purpose is to bring joy. Your purpose is to bring joy. The light of Christ that's in you, the joy that's in you. And he just lit up. So this is not only my challenge, this is my telling you, you're going to do this. Because every time I see you, and I've got your text, so. I want you to call, not text, not email, call three people and tell them what you appreciate about them. Tell them how they are a blessing in your life. Got it? Three people. I could have said five for five minutes, but I'm saying three people engage in conversation for three minutes. And I know you're going, oh, Pastor Ben. And wherever I see you, downtown, at a sporting event, or wherever, I'm going to ask you, did you do it? I mean, uh, no. Three minutes, three people, and then encourage them to call three people. Now, I understand somebody's not there. Well, don't call them at two in the morning. <laughs> I know you. I know you. Oh, Pastor, I tried calling them. The third time you call them, you can leave a message. Three people. Three reasons why they're a blessing in your life. Because we're not living in terror and tension. We're living in hope and wonder and worship. To continue to worship the newborn king. Our closing song is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Over the hills and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. The light of the world has come into our lives. Let's not forget that. And let us use our lives as light in other people's lives. And just for the fun of it, the 12 days of Christmas, I will help you see some of the ways that God is using you. On the twelfth day of Christmas, God has given to us twelve friends following, eleven people praying, ten mentors mentoring, nine quilters quilting, eight teachers teaching, seven servers serving, six singers singing, five acts of kindness, four calling caregivers, three baking bakers, or bakers baking, whatever you want, two readers reading, and a child born in Bethlehem. Get out there. Be a light to the world. Know that you are loved, you are forgiven, and you are blessed. And be a blessing, a light to others. And to that good news, we can all say amen. amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing together, Bright and Glorious is the Sky 301.
Thank you, Jean. Our service continues with the sharing of our faith. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, you'll find that on page 105 in the front of the Red Book. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son on earth, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the gift of Christ with one another. As you share your offering today, we remember that the new year is upon us. What great things will God accomplish at Good Shepherd in the coming year? And how will, good, and how will God work great things through us here at Good Shepherd? God will do many things through your gifts of time, talent, and your treasures. Thank you for those generous gifts last year and in this year ahead of us.
I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us sing together to the first verse of Away in a Manger. God of love and light, teach us your ways. Gather us together in one voice as we remember the many needs of your church and your world. Reveal to us your mercy and love. Renew our faith and trust in your all-encompassing grace. Extend your healing to all of creation. Move us to greater care for the world that you have entrusted to us. Be with all who are facing floodwaters and storms, and be with our brothers and sisters and all creatures in Australia who are facing the ravages of wildfires. Help them to find refuge and relief from the devastation. Lord, in your mercy, make your message of peace and justice heard among all nations. Grant us the wisdom to pursue reconciliation and community. As trouble looms large in, with Iran and the outcome is so unpredictable, help us to join together as people of all faiths in praying that it will at least be peaceful. Guard us, spirit of peace. Guard us all from rushing to actions that cannot be reversed. Calm our emotions that we may reason together. Give our leaders wisdom, patience, and commitment to peaceful resolution. Watch over every life in harm's way. Help us not to seek revenge, but to true reconciliation in our homes, in our communities, in our world, that our children might know the blessings of peace. Lord, in your mercy, open our hearts and our communities to truly welcome all. Save us from judging and excluding others. Heal the sick and comfort the grieving. Turn us towards all who suffer with compassion and love. We pray for Bebo Getchell, Gary Kaufman, Judy Harpestead, Rick Hotzler, Bo Hartman, and all we name in our hearts before you. Use us, O oh Lord, as instruments of your light and love. Lord, in your mercy, Grant us patience with one another. Help us to work for blessed and beloved community. Make us bold in our proclamation of your love for our world. Help us to let our light shine. Lord, in your mercy, guide us on the path of salvation, O God, that the radiance and power of your Holy Spirit working in the world will gather together all peoples and nations in one community to offer you worship and proclaim your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are invited to the table. Come and eat, come and drink the gifts of God for the people of God.
stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world. May we be light to the world in the darkness. Continue to watch over us and bless us with the life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord continue to look upon you with great favor, shining light in your life so that you may be a light to others. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our sending song. Remember, it's to proclaim that Jesus Christ is born. And remember, three people, three minutes. Do it. Let us sing. Go tell it on the mountain, 290 in the Red Book. Coffee Fellowship downstairs, hosted by the Erickson family. Three minutes, three calls, do it, share the light of Christ, and go in peace and serve the Lord.